Hello and welcome to another lesson on cryptanalysis. This is in domain three. So cryptanalysis is also often referred to as breaking cryptography. And essentially what that means is that you're taking an algorithm or a function or a crypto system and you're making it unusable. Again, we're talking about cryptographic functions or cryptographic systems. So for example, if you're trying to use cryptanalysis on a hash, you would be trying to render the hash algorithm unusable uh, if that's economically feasible. And again, we have to consider the work factor in all of these. And with a cryptographic system or an encryption system, you're basically trying to decipher the or decrypt the ciphertext without the key. Or look at an implementation of a system that is basically allowing for the unauthorized disclosure of the content of the message. In the context of cryptanalysis, we have to think about concepts such as key management, and that's basically referring to all management aspects of a key, because the key is the key. So you have to consider things like split knowledge, basically the principle of having two separate pieces of knowledge in order to carry something out. So on our website, I believe we have the example of uh, one person having the encryption key or the passcode to encrypt the, the backup tape and then the other person having the, uh, the keypad combination to the physical facility where that tape is stored and the one not having the other and the other not having the other's uh, piece of information, something to that effect. And then we have another concept called dual control and I believe these are covered briefly in domain one. But uh, dual control is basically the example that's always given is where you have these two people with separate keys and they have to turn those keys at the same time to launch a nuclear missile or whatever it's called. And that's, a, that's, the, that's the military example that's always provided. And then you have to consider things such as key escrow. And that's when you basically have a third party that is controlling the, that is controlling the keys. And so make sure that you have an agreement in place and that there are specific instructions in terms of how those keys are controlled and released by the third party. Continuing on, we have brute force. Brute force is when you have somebody who is at a computer basically trying to guess the password. However, with cryptanalysis, this basically refers to trying to guess the key. So now we move on to some more mysterious terms. You have these different types of attacks that have the, ter the words only and known in them. So for example, ciphertext only, or plain text only, or you have known ciphertext and known plain text. And these are really foreign concepts. The thing that you need to keep in mind is, is this word here, has. So they have the text, some, some type of text. So only has access to the text. So only ciphertext has only the ciphertext. Known text has all known ciphertext only has the ciphertext has the text okay so they're going to have one of these or the other so if this is this this is the plain text it's going to be known plain text they have access to the plain text if it's only ciphertext they're going to have access to the ciphertext here so keep that in mind as we go through this other one here adaptive or chosen <clears throat> now you're going to want to match this s here and chosen so if it's chosen plain text they choose a piece of the plain text of course they have access to it, but they're gonna choose a piece of the plain text. And the key here is they have access. They don't have the text. They have access to, what do they have access to? They have access to the system or the crypto system. So you're gonna match this S with the S in chosen. This might seem a little abstract to you, so you might wanna go over this a couple of times, but again, only ciphertext or known ciphertext, they're gonna have access to the text right here adaptive or chosen attacks they're going to have access to the system they're going to have access to the system and so they're basically going to be able to feed the ciphertext through the crypto system or feed the plain text through the crypto system in order to determine what that ciphertext is or what the plain text is so one way or one direction or the other they're going to be able to feed it through the algorithm so the assumption here is that they have access to the system linear and differential I don't know how testable these terms are, but I know that that linear is usually going to have the term linear probably in the question itself. So you're gonna have something called linear approximation or linear equations with the known plain text or with the, known, with the adaptive or the uh, something that analyzes the behavior of the block cipher. But you're definitely gonna see that word linear in there. So differential is also gonna have the word different or difference. So 
basically it's going to try to compute the differences between the ciphertext to try and obtain the key. So that word, that word difference is going to be in there. Moving right along, we have side channel attacks. And side channel is basically when it looks at the physical attributes, such as power usage or the sound of the, of the system or the temperature and so forth. Fault analysis is when it tries to create an error state in the crypto system. So it's basically going to, it's basically going to um, try and force the, the crypto system into an error state and then compare the bad results with the good results to learn about the algorithm and the key. Then you have something called a probing attack. And this basically looks at the overall architecture, including the circuitry and any additions to the crypto system in order to gain information about the key. Sorry about that little menu that's pinned. Every time I get close to the bottom of the screen, it pops up. Replay is basically when they send repeated input files in order to damage the processing. Moving along, we have the algebraic attack, and this relies on the math structure of the block cipher, and it's basically trying to solve for the key. Then you have frequency analysis, and frequency is when it looks for common phrases in the ciphertext or common, um, yeah, common, common patterns in the ciphertext. So for example, those of you who have seen the movie Imitation Game, I believe it's called, which is where they knew that this is a World War II movie where they, um, the story as the story goes, I don't know my history very well, but as the story goes, they looked for these common phrases in the ciphertext of the Germans because they were intercepting their messages. And, and they would look for, they knew that each message had a date and also the, the words Heil Hitler at the end of it. And so they were able to look for those common phrases in all of the, um, in all the messages. And then based on the message of that day, they would try to use that information to decrypt the message of the day. And eventually that's how they were able to find Hitler and win the war as the story goes. So we have birthday attacks and that's basically where uh, the, the goal is to find the same digest with changed contents. And this relies on something called the birthday paradox. I'm sure that most of you know what that means. If you've taken a class, they, they kind of cover that. It's uh, the principle that there's a 50% chance of any two people having the same birthday if there's a room of 23 people. Factoring is basically when it tries to find the key uh, through solving f or factoring of public keys. And I think this is specifically aimed at RSA because it uses the product of, of large prime numbers to generate public and private keys. Moving right along with dictionary attack, this is basically where the attack is going to use common words or phrases. And I believe the dictionary attack is, is typically thought of as an attack on the live system, whereas a rainbow table is when you have access to the password file or access to the hashes of the passwords. And so what that does is your rainbow table is going to show the passwords along with their hashes. And so that will allow, how do you, how would you say this? A crypt analyst? I don't know, somebody who does crypt analysis for a living to, to look at the rainbow table. I guess somebody who does pen testing, an ethical hacker. There we go. Somebody who would take the rainbow table and enter in a, either a hash or yeah, I guess they, in this case, they would enter in the hashed for value and find the actual password. And so now we have the attack on random number generators, and this refers to the initialization vector, and it's looking for weak implementations of that. So now we have the temporary file attack. They're basically going to look for weak security in the RAM or the temporary files. And then of course we have social engineering, which is always a, a concern. A couple random last terms here. We have fair use in the context of cryptanalysis or cryptography. Not sure why these were kind of tagged in here, but I guess, I guess what this is referring to is digital rights management. So fair use is where you have to weigh the application of encryption to a, a specific product such as music. They want to ensure that you're protecting it from piracy and copyright violations, but also you want to allow fair use. And so there are things to consider there. And then you have something called the Vassanar agreement. It basically restricts the export and import of cryptographic software and technologies. So with that, a big thank you to all of you who have shown support for this website. Uh, as many of you know, we do this in our spare time. We don't have a whole lot of spare time, so we really try to make something of value. Um, our mission is to really prepare you for the exam because we felt that many of the practice question test banks that are out there were not valuable to us in preparing us for the exam. The questions were not like the questions on the exam. The style of the 
test banks was not in the style of the exam and so that's why we created this website it was to give you a, a true exam experience so if you want a true exam experience head over to cissprep.net and sign up for six months and we have we're about uh, 1300 questions now and in a few months here we're going to increase our membership to a year because the common body of knowledge is about to expire they're about to update it uh, March or April I believe and at that time we'll update our website as well to the best that we can thanks again for watching and have a great day